I want somebody, a therapist, is it possible to get one to tell you, you know what? They just look at you after they ask, who is Talisa? And I tell them and we get to talk about childhood stuff and how I feel and relationships. And then at the end of the session, they say, okay, well, I want to sum this up and just say that you're full of shit. (laughs) I'm Shannon. And I'm Lisa. And you're listening to Black Tivities, a celebration of all things Black. Black culture, Black history, Black prospectus, and Black panache. Celebrating our Blackness doesn't mean exclusion. Everybody's invited, but you got to come in and have a seat. So let let the the Black Tivities begin. Hello, guys. Welcome back to Black Tivities Podcast. I am here, Mona Lisa, along with Miss Shannon the Great. Say hi, Shannon. Hello. All right. So it is time that we address the elephant in the room. Today, we are talking about Black people in therapy. Have you ever been to therapy? This is very important, okay? Many Black people, especially in the past, have never been to therapy. We're going to talk about why that is and why Black people may be the main ones who need it. Yeah. But first, we need you. Yes, you out there listening. We've had many people tell us how much they love this podcast and love what we're doing. And we're so grateful for that. It takes a lot of our time and our money to do what we do every week. We have subscriptions that we pay for so that we can record and edit and post each episode. And we're coming out of our shallow pockets. So if you love our show, please share it with somebody you think that would love it too. More downloads equals more opportunities to get some of those costs covered for us because the way my bank account is set up, like I just need y'all to help us spread the word about Black activities. Yes. Thanks for listening. As usual, now on with the show. All right. If you listen to the bonus episode where I was a guest on It's About Damn Time. That was really good. Really good. But go ahead. Sorry, guys. I had to put that out there. (laughs) It's a podcast that is hosted by my buddy, Jared. You heard me talk about my experience going through therapy and trying to work and create a better me. I feel like when we become adults, we have to like try and unlearn all the bad stuff that we learned throughout our childhood that messed us up Mm -hmm. and therapy has been a way for me personally to do that if I sound a little bit different or I don't know how I sound right now but I I feel like I don't have as much energy I have been dealing with my own mental health struggle Mm -hmm. and because I suffer from anxiety and depression Mm -hmm. And so I have been trying to wean off of my anxiety medicine and it's making me feel a little weird. Right. Right. And, And that's understandable. Have you ever been to therapy, Lisa? Yes, I have. I want to share all of this with you in my whole therapy session. But I think first, let's give them some sex facts and then we can dive a little bit deeper. All right, let's do that. Let's start with some facts about Black people and mental health. According to Mental Health America, Black adults are more likely to have feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and worthlessness than white adults. A survey by SAMHSA reported 4.8 million Black people reported having a mental illness. 1.1 million of those being a serious one. And a 2018 statistic said that over 50% of Black people ages 29 to 49 with serious mental illness did not receive treatment. Research shows that many Black people believe that if they said they experienced mild depression or anxiety, they would be labeled crazy. So they don't feel like they can talk about it. Less than 2% of American Psychological Association members are Black. Mm. That means we don't have many professionals that are Black to help us. Post-traumatic slave syndrome. You haven't heard of that? 
It's a theory that says that there has been multi-generational trauma for descendants of slaves as a result of centuries of slavery and oppression that our ancestors experienced. I want to point out that this is a theory, so you can decide for yourself if you believe it or not. I'm just going to give you the facts about the theory. Joy DeGroy Leary Mm -hmm. wrote a book called Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome America's Legacy of Enduring Injury and Healing in 2005, where she introduced this theory. She says that it is a psychological, spiritual, emotional, and behavioral syndrome that results in lack of self esteem, feelings of hopelessness, and some other things. And it stems from unresolved PTSD that was passed down from inequality, racism, and oppression added to the stress that we currently experience due to the prejudice that still exists. Mm -hmm. Some of the symptoms of this condition include extreme feelings of suspicion, hypervigilance, perceived negative motivations of others. So like thinking everybody has a motive or is out to get you violence against self property or people in your own community, difficulty concentrating, feeling jumpy or being easily angered, Mm. appearing emotionally numb and higher rates of anxiety and fragmented identity. Mm. Wow. If it is true It might explain the high suicide rate of black men, our mistrust of just about everybody, including each other, which would explain why we can't seem to get it together as a community like other cultures do. It would explain a part of why we have so many health issues in our community, why we might perpetuate some of the stereotypes like we talked about in last week's episode, and why there's so much generational trauma in our families. You be the judge. And that's Sax Facts. Wow. With some of the things that you shared on there, it does, it makes sense that I potentially, especially in the workplace, I'm walking around with the post-traumatic slave syndrome. It always has me, you know, on my toes, looking at people sideways. And it's not just me. It's obviously, in my opinion, things that have happened or things that I have witnessed. And it makes me, you know, look sideways like, "Mm, I feel like that could have been handled differently. And it is based on who I am and the color of my skin. But I have to admit that I think I am victim to that. So you believe that PTSS is a real thing, post-traumatic slave syndrome? I think so. I think so. Because, I mean, if if it never happened, then we wouldn't be walking around on edge like this, right? Yeah. I mean, if you look at those symptoms, like Mm -hmm. extreme feelings of suspicion. Right. Like... I feel like a lot of people question other people's motives. A mm-hmm. lot of black people. They don't but, just give them the benefit of the doubt. It's like, I don't know about that. But but I want to say, though, we're not just walking around just questioning people like, ha, 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 you know, just right. using. <laughs> there are things that happen on Swoop called dated back in history. OK, there are things that goes on to this day that are racially influenced. Okay, to have us on our toes and thinking that way because we don't want to be treated differently. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we're going to be on a, you know, look sideways, always on guard. That's how I say always on guard, because if there is something that is continuously happening and there is no sense of it letting up anytime soon, then, of course, that we're going to look at. I mean, that's that's normal. Mm-hmm. Somebody do something to you, you ain't gonna keep letting them come around and do something to you. Not unless you the crazy girl that got the you know a crazy baby daddy that's toxic. <laughs> but that's a different story. But if somebody, you know, especially if you know somebody, they give off their racist vibes. You gonna side eye? 
If they we got something. we got that little radar too. Yeah, yeah. Like you gonna side eye, you gonna keep them at a distance. Conversation will be short, okay? And that's all right. We don't have to. Just like you know, any other person, they don't have to entertain someone. We don't. We mm-hmm. not. We just gonna. I'm here to do what I need to do, and I'm gonna get on about my business because. Right. If you don't give good vibes, I'm pretty sure I've been somewhere and I didn't give good vibes to somebody, but I'm not going to get mad because that's just the vibes that they picked up at the time. So, yeah. but I believe it. I, I, I do believe that that is a real thing. And we talked about too, when we had our men and mental health episode, mm-hmm. we talked about how they are like emotionally numb sometimes. Right. So that could be a piece of that. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, just the struggle that we've had to dig ourselves out of the hole, like historically Mm -hmm. to pull ourselves up by the bootstraps as people say we should do. Right. Like that's a lot of added stress on top of us. Mm -hmm. So I can understand why there would be higher rates of anxiety. Right. Right. Or depression. (laughs) But the thing um, about it is the anxiety and depression, like people have it and they don't realize that they have it. Yes. Um, and, and, and it's crazy. I'm going to be honest. I, I didn't because I'm going to be OK. So when I first encountered someone that said that they had a panic attack, I was like, guess I went go <laughs> sit down. You know, so just breathe and get like, what do you, what do you mean you had panic attack? But when I had my very first one. I didn't know what was going on. You feel like you're dying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've had a couple myself. myself. Yeah, so I'm sitting here like, so I feel like we misdiagnose. It's it's us too. Us as black people, we misdiagnose what we have going on because we don't take our health serious. I feel like when it comes to therapy, us as black people, because we don't take it serious, we don't buy into that. And we also go off of people that raised us because one, those resources weren't available to our grandmamas and right. all of that. Yeah. Okay. So obviously here it is where we do have the resources. They're like, oh, you don't need all of that. I ain't use that. But grandmama, you sit here with no leg that we don't had about a couple uncles. Okay. That used to come by the house. No, I was just playing. My granny wasn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that you is some, some people's healing. story. Yes. I mean, you have some healing. You'll hear the traumatic stories of when your mama talk about how she was molested and she wanted to make sure that it happened with you. And then your grandmama, if you just look at the, the list where your great grandmama had a whole bunch of children, possibly. If you look at your great uncle and, and aunties, they had different daddies. Yeah. You know, and I think about that. Like, I, I really do. I think about that. Like, coming from that, how does that break down to our generation and how we feel and the information well, that's given to us? Yeah, that's where a lot of that generational trauma comes from, I feel like, because there were a lot of, I mean, you've got, like, our grandparents' parents were probably slaves or, mm-hmm. you know, they're newly freed and they experience that trauma, pass it down to their kids. Right, right. Then, you know, we go through the whole Jim Crow era, mm-hmm. civil rights, like all of that residual is passed down because nobody was getting any kind of therapy or help right. to deal with that stuff. So it's natural that it just comes through generation and through generation. And so even if it's not in the forefront, I feel like, you know, we are still dealing with the trauma from our ancestors. Right. Because it was unresolved. Right. So now I feel like we have to be the ones to resolve it now that we do have some resources available so that we don't continue passing down all that stuff to our kids. Right. Right. And that's something I am very big on. Baby, I need to buy some shirts with this is breaking generational curses. Mm, and yes. another thing that bothers me is when I, I think I, I need to take a look at a bigger picture when it comes to certain situations. I look at it like I don't want my kids to suffer how I may have did or go without I, like I may have did when I was younger. And especially with the way my mom had to go without or the way my grandmother had to go without. Because believe me, 
they told you about their their growing up and how they was raised and things that happened to them because they felt like that was their way of exposing you to it. That way you could see the signs and avoid it. But unfortunately, that doesn't happen in every situation. But back to what I was saying is I go and I think in my mindset, okay, well, I'm keeping my kids from a struggle, but then you'll have family members come and say, you're spoiling them. Mm. But I mean, what do you mean I'm spoiling them? Like, I don't want them. If I'm able to take them to school in the morning, then I'm going to do that because I'm going to use that time to talk to them in the morning. Oh, and another thing, something that I noticed after I was going to therapy is when you get up in the morning in this house, no one's screaming and yelling. Mm. Everyone greets each other, say good morning, but it's all positivity. Even when I wake my youngest daughter up, I'm in there. Good morning. Wake up. I'm rubbing her back. I'm like whispering stuff in her ear. There's like, okay, shout out to I am Carlton Banks. That guy that makes the little funny videos for yeah. the Kojic <laughs> church. Yeah. Avery is obsessed with him. So sometimes I'll whisper some things in her ear that Lily says, the little character, and Avery will wake up like smiling and then she'll bust out laughing. So waking up with positivity, it makes a difference because I remember being little and I love my mom and whatever. And some of y'all can relate. Your mama coming and bust through the door, turn the light on, get up and we got to go. And you like, oh my God. And that kind of like Ugh, does something to you. Yeah. And I, I'm a believer in how you get up in the morning and get dressed. It alters your day. It yeah. sets, you know, the tone for your day. So um, especially when my oldest one, before she had left and went to college, we would get up and she's obsessed with Frank Ocean. So she would turn on Frank Ocean. She had a playlist and that's how she would get dressed every morning. And then I start noticing with her playing the music, I would hear my youngest in there, you know, getting greased up. She getting dressed and I hear her singing mm -hmm. to the songs and I'm sitting here like, OK. And I like that. It set the tone for that day. I right. enjoyed taking them all to school because, you know, I don't know. It just to me that felt like it was it was something different because we had time to talk in the mornings. We had time to remind each other of schedules and it, it was great. So with me having that way to where, OK, my children have been fed. I know that they got to school safely. I did that. It set my tone for the day when I went to work. I wasn't angry. Mm -hmm. I was calm. It even controlled how I was pleasant to customers when they come in. You know what I mean? Yeah, it really sets workspace. up your day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I'm very thankful that with, you know, getting, seeing a therapist is, is it, it, it helps. It helps because sometimes you be trying to talk about things and yeah, you have friends and people around, but they don't know exactly like you're saying it, but they don't know that the things that you're saying is something that's really bothering you. So they mm -hmm. go over their head and you feel like nobody's right. listening. Right. Or nobody understands. Right. Right. I know. I like that you shared in sex facts about the percentages and not them not being enough like African-American therapists. Mm -hmm. I have to say like now I was looking for someone because I'm pretty sure I said it. I got my second daughter who's transitioning to college. So I'm about to have two in college on top of you guys donating to black activities. If you want to donate to <laughs> <laughs> the college fund, the college fund <laughs> and my mental health. <laughs> but I lost my train of thought because I was right. This is <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. Let's just scratch it. It'll come back. I just thought about college. Girl, it's been rough getting her ready. They just got a house. I just had to buy her a car. Okay. I'll let you take over because it's just, oh, I'm having an anxiety attack right now. Okay. Well, let me ask you this question. It might <laughs> jog your memory with what you were talking about. Why do you think black people don't go to therapy? <laughs> like I stated before, they don't believe that something is wrong mentally. Okay. Um, so what they do is they keep working and they keep going thinking that they can cover it up. And then on top of that, they may not realize or take seriously the resources that is now available. And when it comes to black people and things going on, we think that 
being comedic or joking and laughing about somebody's pain will kind of like help them along. But sometimes that ain't the answer always. Because uh-huh. I have to tell you, like, when if y'all know me, me and my family, we we laugh at everything. We poke fun at everything, everything. No, nobody's safe, okay? <laughs> but looking at it, though, I have to say sometimes some of that stuff, mm, we might need to chill out just a little bit. Yeah. But I feel like with the way things are going in the generational type things, like comedy was the way to hide and protect our mental health. Yeah. It's a coping mechanism. Yeah, exactly. A coping mechanism. Comedy. I mean, to this day, you know, I kind of do that to my own self. Me too. Um, Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But I think that distrust mm -hmm. also plays a role in why black people don't go to therapy. Like they don't trust people with their business. Mm-hmm. They don't want to speak on it because typically, you know, we just kept everything in the family, right? You don't tell what happens outside the house. Yeah. That's an unhealthy thing. Oh, you know, I just realized what I was going to say. Okay. Okay. One, the lack of resources. But mm-hmm. to piggyback off what you just said, you don't trust the person. So also by there not being enough African-American therapists or someone to talk to, because I'm going to be honest with you, I have been trying yet. This is where I was going. I remember now, guys, huh? (laughs) I have been trying to find um, a black therapist that takes my insurance. Yes. I spent all of this money, baby. I'm higher use. That's what level insurance I'm on. Okay. Because I have my children on there, too. So I spent all of this money and I, I'm looking for someone in my mind. I feel like a black therapist or someone that's close to that will be able to understand exactly how to help me work through this post-traumatic slave syndrome. Right. Because they understand your plight. They right. understand as a black person what you're going through on top of the extra stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And it's been very hard. Now, I'm not saying that in my area, there are not any African-American therapists, so you know, but they just don't take my insurance. Yes, so that is an issue. I'm going to have to pay out of pocket to get that mental help that I'm possibly going to be looking for. Because I'm looking for, it's going to be hard having two in college and they growing up on me. Oh, it's your babies hard. not babies anymore. Right. Like my middle daughter last night, she going to get mad at me for telling her business. <laughs> <laughs> she went out the way to go and bake some cookies, right? And these cookies look very good. And I was, I was like, oh, wait, I was like, let me get one of those. She's like, no, they're from my picnic tomorrow. And I was like, picnic? She's like, I told you about it. So she's going on a date tomorrow. What oh. today? Today. Sorry. So she's going on a date and they're going to the picnic. Okay. He's going on a picnic. So I'm like, okay. She's like, well, I remember I, I told you we was doing it. He's going to come by here. I want you to meet him. Blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right. But I'm sitting here like my kids are growing up. My middle daughter is transitioning from, I don't know if y'all remember Daria from MTV. I, I watched Daria. Yes. If you know my middle daughter, that's how she, her tone, the way she talks. Like I got her car and at first she's just like, oh yes, this is so awesome. You know what I mean? <laughs> I she can has a hard totally time. relate. <laughs> I'm just like that. <laughs> like when she my gets, husband gets so mad at me. <laughs> Like, Shannon, that's I can it? see that. You know what? Now that I think I can see that in you too. I can see that in you too. But she's transitioning from that Daria don't care, very little emotion to I seen her go out of the way for something that's about to happen. Like she's stepping into the dating world. She's about to leave college. And I'm sitting here like, bro, I need somebody to talk to. This ain't working out well. <laughs> <laughs> it's working out for her. Of course. Of course. <laughs> you know, but I got to make sure I'm good too. If my mental health ain't good, how I'm going to be there for them. Right. 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 Yeah. So I've been on this journey trying to see if I can find someone. It like I might have to pay out of pocket to get that ideal person, you know, and I have found several that is really good, great reviews. But y'all have ideas, relate. hit me up. 
in, inbox us. <laughs> I can relate to that struggle because when I needed someone, because I was having panic attacks and I didn't mm-hmm. know why, mm-hmm. I ended up going with a white woman because I can have free sessions with my mm-hmm. insurance. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how that was going to turn out because I'm like, what's she, she in really like, going to understand? Tell me, tell me about Shannon. Yeah. Yeah. Who is Shannon? Yeah, that was the question. Shannon? I'm like, I have no idea. I have no idea, ma'am. That's I don't know. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's but, talk about your childhood. And you're in a town and she's like, that is great. Now, what you need to do is, and you're like, wait, we didn't even get, you already trying to, you know. But see, the thing about therapy is they don't tell you what to do. You got to figure it out on your own, or at least in my experience, they're like, that's something you need to think about. Mm. It is it wrong that, okay, if I'm sitting here, I'm going to ask, if I want somebody, a therapist, is it possible to get one to tell you, you know what? They just look at you after they ask, who is Talisa? And I tell them and we get to talk about childhood stuff and how I feel and relationships. And then at the end of the session, they say, okay, well, I want to sum this up and just say that you're full of shit. (laughs) And you need to take responsibility in your actions. Okay. Now, this is your assignment. You know what I mean? I'm sure there are people out there. I, I, I feel like finding a therapist is almost like dating because (laughs) you know the people they have different personalities and different styles so you probably could find somebody out there that will call you on your stuff (laughs) to me I feel like that's successful like (laughs) I'll leave (laughs) after being told you know I'm full of shit and you know I'll potentially have <laughs> narcissist ways. I'll be walking out like, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to go get me some Starbucks. Like, yeah, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like you do need somebody like that. <laughs> Just be real with me, man. Just be yeah. real. Just be real. A hundred percent. Your baby daddy get on your nerves. Yes. <laughs> it's okay that you ignore him. That's fine. That's totally fine, Lisa. Now, what do you want to do today? And I just be like, I just want to take a nap. And they be like, well, go home and you take a damn nap. Okay. (laughs) Like, that's how I want my sessions to go. (laughs) Oh, and another thing too, y'all take advantage of your days off, especially you got PTO. It's okay to use, utilize your days off for mental health days. I take mental health days. Yep. (laughs) Question for you though. Okay. Do you think white people in this country experience a generational trauma as well? Yes. Like maybe, let's call it post-traumatic enslaver syndrome? I say yes. I don't know how to break that. The enslaver, that's, that's, that's too much. I don't know. I can't relate to that. So I don't know exactly how, but I feel like they, every culture go through their own little thing and they need ways and help for us dealing with it. I would say yes to that because there's no way if you think about the violence Mm -hmm. and just the crazy, ridiculous lynchings, Mm -hmm. killings, torturing, beatings, like how can one witness that experience that and not have some kind of trauma for them to be so desensitized to that? That is weird. They would actually like. I'm sitting here trying go to go to public lynchings like it was. Yeah, you and, know, and, Friday and night finest, football. Yeah, in their finest attire. And I feel like I would attribute the way that some white people behave toward us mm-hmm. as post-traumatic enslaver syndrome because I feel like sense. it's ingrained in them, mm-hmm. even though you know they're not overtly racist right and i would not label a lot of and white they people do, racist. they do things and they say things not realizing that it's crossing the line but they've been taught that right it's they've it's in that. them mm-hmm. somewhere mm-hmm. And so I, can, I can see that as well i can see that as well but again 
you need to recognize that that is behavior that is not tolerated. And just because someone look at you and say that they're not going to tolerate that behavior and you don't understand it, it still don't make it okay. We're not, we should not make excuses because y'all are not going to make excuses for us if we do something out of the, out of the norm. So I just want to put that out there. I just feel like that's why a lot of white people don't understand why some of the things that they say are not cool or right. why, you know, they don't understand when we are upset about things like affirmative action Mm -hmm. or why we still talk about things that happened in our past, which, you know, we're like a generation removed from segregation. Is it wrong if you are among people who feel like black people should just let it go? But is it wrong if... Let's say, and I'm not going to say I've done this, but we make a joke about it, knowing that it potentially made them feel uncomfortable. Like it just comes out, you know, and I'm going to, let me give you an example. Cause you looking at me. Let me give you yeah, an example. <laughs> let me give you an example. <laughs> okay. So we sitting there and something pops up and then I'll say, well, shoot, I wouldn't be able to sit here if it was so and so so and so many years ago. And then everybody's like, oh, and then the white person's like, oh my gosh, they're right. Like segregation, you know, is that wrong for me to do that? I don't think so. Okay. I feel like some white people, they don't want to feel uncomfortable. Mm. But they don't realize that we always feel uncomfortable. Right. (laughs) Like we're walking around a lot of times in a lot of spaces. We're like the only one. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there are a lot of white people who would be uncomfortable if they're the only one. Right. But like that's the norm for us. And so, no, I think... You know, to deal with that whole situation with our past, people are going to have to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. It just is what it is. Like, it's not a comfortable topic. It's not. It's true. This is true. Well, I think that it is, you know, great that we did. We were able to go over this. So why don't we go ahead and share some feedback from the community? Okay. So if you could just introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Keisha. Okay, Keisha. So I'm going to ask you, do you feel like People should go to therapy? Yes. So? I do. Why? Why you think so? Because we need it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been to therapy? No, and I'm speaking that I need to go too. Uh, so say, much we anger. Do. We do. Yeah, my name is Rafael Marte, repping out here in Northwest Georgia. You know, by way of Florida, by way of New York, by way of Dominican Republic. So, your business out there, though. My business, oh. Lock guys, man. If you ever need any security for your doors, your business, your home, you need remotes for your for your vehicle, you need cameras for your for your assets, you need you need burglar alarms, you need our safes, we do it all. We're certified and licensed. There we go. That's, That's how we do it. All right. So do you feel like all people of color should go to therapy? Well, I don't know if all people of color should go, but definitely if you're struggling with some mental health, you know what I'm saying? If you just feel like things are a little bit harder for yourself, you definitely need that help, you know? Okay. You know, I, Have you ever been to I, I, I talk from experience. You know? yeah, 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 I'm, 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 growing up, I didn't believe in, you know, anxiety and, and, and attention deficit and all of that. I thought it was just a marketing tool, and I'm sure that in some form it is, right? But there came a point in my life where couldn't work around the way that I had been working around. You know, I always had a I always had a struggle with certain things and I said, you know what, I'll figure it out. And I did. But there came a time where I couldn't I couldn't figure it out no more and I and I went and got help. You know, and, and it's, it's the best thing I did for my family and myself. You know? Yes. For sure. Thank you. All right. High five on that one. Boom. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. Very important. Yeah. Okay. I think a lot of other people feel like we do. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So go talk to somebody. Yes. Right? Yes. Go talk to somebody. Use the resources available. If you, ha- especially if you have health insurance, everybody should have health insurance. See what resources is available to you. You're paying for it anyway. Yeah, because they are putting a lot more mental health resources into mm-hmm. 
the insurance package. Mm-hmm. And they even have lines see, that you can just call and talk to someone free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But whatever if it doesn't resources bother you, are out there. Yeah. But if it doesn't bother you to go sit down with, you know, Miss Mary and she asks you, who are you? For an hour, go ahead, do it. That's attention that you are getting to where they're asking you questions to make you think about who you are. And that's going to be the hell. It can be uncomfortable just because it's uncomfortable to come face to face with who you really are. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Some people aren't ready to face the facts about who they are. Right. But I think it's beneficial because you're going to feel so much better when you get to the other side of that. Okay. Well, let's anyway, move along. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's Is go there with this time? activity. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got some questions for you. We're just oh, going to do a true or false. Yeah. All right, so all answer wrong. true or false. Y'all come on, sit down, watch me get all these wrong. Come on. Come on <laughs> you in. might Have not. Just take a seat, guys. Okay. Number one, the impact depression and anxiety has on the global economy can be measured in $1 billion in lost productivity each year. Is that true or false? $1 billion? Mm-hmm. Uh. Okay, even though a billion sounds like a lot, I feel like it is way more. You know, the U.S., we'd be going in. So it's way more money than that. So I'll have to say that one is false. <laughs> and you would be right. It's actually one trillion. See? Yeah. See? Mm-mm. It ain't America if it ain't in the trillions. U.S., we work ourselves to death. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Number two. More females receive mental health services than men. And this comes from a 2020 statistic. I'm going to say that's true. It is true. Yeah. And it would be 51.2% versus 37.4%. So that kind of tells us that men are more afraid to go to therapy than women. Mm. Or at least that's how I interpret it. Number three, more people have been diagnosed with depression than anxiety in the U.S. Yes, I'll say that's true. That's actually false. What? Yeah, anxiety is a bigger issue. It would be 42.5 million adults with anxiety versus 21 million with depression. Okay. Yeah, we're all stressed out. Yeah, we're all stressed out. All right, number four, 25% of U.S. adults with a diagnosable condition reported in 2023 that they could not afford to access the treatment they needed. True. We broke. So this is actually false and it's in the percentage. What? It's in the percentage. Okay. So it's not 25%. It's actually 42% Mm. that say they can't afford the treatment they need. So that's a huge issue. Our last one is there's a shortage of mental health professionals. True. Most definitely true. A recent report cited only one provider was available for every 350 individuals in need of services. So it's not just a lack of black mental health professionals. It's mental health professionals overall. There's too much demand and not enough supply. Mm. So I guess if you're thinking of a career, that'd be hard. That would be though. a good one. That'd be hard because it's like my question is how do uh, therapists shut off their day? You know what I mean? Like having all of these people just unloading on you. I don't think I would be able to do it. Yeah, that would be rough, especially if like you know you're a very empathetic person and you kind of take on other people's pain. Yeah. All right. Well. Let's hear what you got for our piece today, Lisa. All right. So 
this one is called Mentally Smart. And I tell you, I'm strong. I mean, really strong. Abilities far more than the average could ever imagine. Walking among the crowd, even though the cloud remained dark, shading my everlasting thoughts. Operating on fumes, but yet a smile on my face, the world stomping on me, kicking, kicking. Employer possibly pouring salt in my eyes, dark figures with no faces standing, watching with their hand out, waiting for their turn. The feeling taking over, I can't breathe. My eyes closed as you feel every, every single blow. The insults float around like gnats, but we all hear a familiar voice. It says, take a deep breath, just breathe. Then you open your eyes. You stand there halfway through your shift. You make it every day with two gallons of water on your chest because you are like me, strong. I mean, like really, really strong. Thank you. Mm, I felt that. All right. <laughs> I was thinking about a panic attack I had where I felt like I couldn't breathe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's rough. Well, guys, it's very important that we do take care of ourselves. If mentally we're not there, then the ones that count on us, it, it just won't work. So it's very important that you take into consideration of the strong person that you are. And then if you need the additional resources, don't be ashamed. They have many different ways where you can do it discreetly. But sometimes it just takes that one inbox or that one text message to someone who may not be in your circle on a regular basis. That could be the answer to your problem. Yeah. So don't be ashamed. I think it takes a lot of strength to take that step if you need it. Right. Well, next week should be a very interesting conversation as well about cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation. Kim K box of braids. I just have to say it. Go ahead. (laughs) Sorry. Where is that line? That's what we're going to be discussing. Like, where does it cross over into appropriation? And we'll have a special guest next week who might have more knowledge than the two of us on this topic because she talks about diversity and inclusion every day. That's her job. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to that. While you're waiting on that episode to drop, hit us up on IG or Facebook. IG has been popping in the past couple of days. Shannon has been putting in some work on this Instagram page. (laughs) I was at work and my phone kept going off and I was getting notification after notification. And I couldn't look at it because I'm at work, but I I knew. But when I got that message from her, it was like, look, look what I did. It was like, all she had to do, it was like the back signal. She just had to send me that emoji (laughs) with the sunglasses on. I just looked at her. I was just like, I looked down at my phone and said, that baby working. Because like, what, you gain like, what, 200 people, followers in a day? I mean, probably, yeah. yeah. I think we yeah. have gone up maybe 300 followers in the past two days. Yeah. And literally. then on top of that, they are like, the conversation has been popping, like popping. So go in and see what these folks talk about. Some, some of the comments you ain't going to like, go in there and tell them about themselves. <laughs> Be that person that say, you know what? You are full of shit. Just, it's okay. <laughs> I want to see it. Do it so I can see it. Let them know. (laughs) Yeah. So we are at Blacktivities Pod. Make sure that you spell Blacktivities right. But if you are hesitant about that, it will all be in the show notes. Yes. And until next week. King and queens keep doing big things. Let go. (laughs) 